said, if you look at Common Core and how they put the spin on, they do not have Dr. King as part of the curriculum in the civil rights movement. I do not believe that. That was, I, I mean, that, that is unthinkable. But when you think of it, when they put the spin on the Malcolm X for the fact, check that one out. So be careful, make sure that you stay with these children and understand what your task is. You cannot now say, okay, we have the reunions, now what are we going to do after the reunion? You want to go back, you're going to take them children like I'm doing with my six-year-old young sister, that's my granddaughter, I have the videotape to show, I mean, she's now to cut grass with electric lawnmower, not a gas lawnmower. She can now paint, not too good because she don't have the dexterity. The 13-year-old cousin, a female, she is the one that now they get into work. The 12-year-old, we are done no thing. We don't get no grants or no proposals. I teach them how to go out and be and get contracts. So I used to teach them the location of schools. Now that is something that we ain't big, but we will accept grants and proposals to do the necessary training that is going to be needed. But in the meantime, let's teach them to become independent economically. As I got fired from the Cape Girardeau Civic Center, became hired by OENO, Tom Reeves took a job in Champaign, Illinois as the executive director of OEO up there. He said, I want you to be my assistant director. I went up to Champaign, I liked it, the agents were fine, the pay was real great compared to here. By me being educated and a good white post Negro, then I began to get politicized here. I'm to, this is my beginning, you're beginning to understand the community and political, what it means to be an activist. This is where I got my start at. So I told Tom Reed, thank you. I want the job you had, executive director here in Cape, because I have the education that I've been told to get from my family, my teachers, and everything since I've been gone. I have the experience. I should get the job. I'm chasing this white man, American dream. I didn't get the job. One of the black ladies was on the uh, board at that time, uh, Miss Elsie, I believe, a great lady. Great, 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 I'm telling you. And uh, this one vote. <laughs> I came home that night, I lived in 19, going Frederick across from the bus station. I cried deeply. I found it. Wife, two daughters, a trainer named Dick Snyder. If y'all remember Dick, you know he was the top administrative assistant. That Rebel Corn had asked me to come to Cairo and join the United Front there, and I I, I couldn't leave Smelterville. I had to stay. That night, I had enough understanding that the Smelterville people. It's got it, take it care of the business, and I need to now go to Carroll and all and take my family. I did that. I did that. I don't regret that. Out, out of that, I was sentenced to five to five years in maximum security. And Terry Hunter down the Philippine to take you like a concentration camp. I was a political prisoner. When I travel, they tell me, no, you no, no, no. You don't have political prisoner here in America. Yes, you do. They call us convicted felons. I have one minute left, and I can take this one minute to say to you all, as black people, keep doing what you're doing. Have this as many years that you can. Take your alphabetus. And thank you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>